Yo, my name is Major Slack. Thanks for coming back if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, thanks for clicking on this video and give me a little bit of your precious time. Let's see if I can do a two minute intro. Two minutes, okay? This is Elden Ring. Elden Ring was recently released uh, just about a week ago on February 25th to be exact. It's a humongous, humongous, colossal, titanic RPG with 18 megatons of content. I'm, I'm not kidding, it's nuts. You start this game and it lands on you like a sumo wrestler. It's absolutely nuts. And I absolutely love this game. I have it installed on my PS4 and my PC. This is the PC version. As usual, this will be a real walkthrough, which means I will practice study before uploading all videos. I am deeply committed to making a smooth walkthrough viewing experience. I hate watching bumbling and stumbling walkthrough videos, so I'm not going to make them. There are 10 different classes you can start off Elden Ring as. I tried each and every one for a couple of hours, then I played as the Vagabond for about half a day, then I played as the Astrologer for about half a day, then I toyed briefly with the idea of attempting to beat the Grafted Scion, the impossible starting boss that you're not supposed to beat but you can beat him. Um, <laughs> the game gives you one shot at that before it automatically moves on. Figured the samurai had the best chance, tried that, uh, failed miserably, and then figured, well, that was way too hard for the average gamer anyways. And that's another thing I've committed to, and that is developing game plans and strategies and walkthroughs for gamers of all skill levels all skill levels all right i am not an elitist i don't expect you to be a crack shot badass with the reflexes of a hummingbird on joel cola to follow my walkthroughs all right now that being said fair warning this game is hard it has no difficulty settings there is only one difficulty setting and that is give you a swift kick in the nuts as soon as you start the game and then rinse and repeat every 10 minutes thereafter I'm not kidding, it's a bitch. But don't worry, I've got your back. I've got your back. All you hardcore slackers know my motto. Stick with the slack and you won't get whacked. That's two minutes, slack. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, it's going to go a little longer than two minutes. After pushing a lot deeper into the game, I finally decided that the best class for my first walkthrough would be the Prisoner. This is partly a personal choice. I think he or she is a total badass, but I also think that his starting weapons are perfect for newcomers to this game. Um, well, at least the way I play him. Um, he's basically a spell sword accommodating a playstyle featuring a beautiful mix of stealth, swordplay, and sorcery. Okay, how long was that? Two and a half minutes. Boring! Shut up and get out with it! Alright, alright. Keep your panties on, PB. Alright, people. That's it. Saddle up. Lock and load. Elden Ring walkthrough starts now. Major Slack Video. Here we go. Press any button. New game. Like I said, there's no difficulty levels. There's just one kick your ass. You get to start uh, with one of ten different classes. Here are all the different classes. Vagabond, warrior, hero, bandit, astrologer, which is the mage. Uh, prop, another kind of mage. Samurai is kind of like an archer, melee guy. Prisoner is my bad boy. Confessor, another kind of sort of mage, and um, this one, well, if you want to go with the wretch, well, we'll just notify your next of kin. Um, we're going, to, actually, you know what, doesn't matter which thumbnail you choose, you can choose any class from any thumbnail. These are just for representational purposes, okay? So, type A is male, type B is female. Let's go with male, and you can choose your class right here. The exact same thing that I showed you. Just click on Origin and you got here are the choices of any class you want. Alright, we're going with Prisoner. And let's enter his name here. I'm gonna call him Happy Face <laughs> 3000. And you'll see why in a minute. The only other thing, um, everything else is cosmetic except for Keepsake. Keepsake is a special token that you get to start out with that gives you a bonus. There's 10 different Keepsakes. Is there 10? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine keepsakes, or just go with none. Um, I'm trying to remember what all I, I tried them all. This one is a health bonus. This one gives you three thousand bucks. Uh, well, runes. The the currency in this game is called runes. Um, this one gives you an extra flash charge. This one gives you um uh summons. Uh, this one gives you five cracked pots, which is actually quite useful. You may think, why the hell would I want five cracked pots? I could just buy those or find them around the game. Um, the first merchant you come across, he'll only have three for sale. And they actually cost 300 runes a pop. So that's like five cracked pots. That's like 1,500 
runes worth of cracked pots. So it's actually quite valuable. And the fact that you can actually have five cracked pots right, right at the very beginning. And cracked pots, basically, you can make, let's call them grenades, okay? Um, using um, various ingredients that we're going to be collecting throughout the game. And you mix them in the cracked pot, and you need the cracked pot to make the grenade. Uh, this is a special key that you can also find around the game. Uh, this one, I forget what it is, and I forget what this one is, and I forget what that one is. We're going to go with the best two are... <laughs> sorry, I tried them all. I, I should have taken notes on them, but it doesn't really matter. Tell you what, the, we're going to keep this on a need-to-know basis. right? I can look, look at my notes and check these all out, but it's just going to take forever if I explain every last detail about everything we encounter. So we're going to keep this on a need-to-know basis. The best two, in my humble opinion, are Lands Between Rune and Golden Seed, which will give you an extra flash charge. This is probably the better choice, but I always like to have a lot of money at the beginning of the game, so we're going to go with Lands Between Rune. All right, so that's it. Prisoner of Lands Between Rune. You can change the detail, change the appearance of your character by fooling around with all this stuff. Uh, it goes into great detail. You can fix it. Fool around with that, but I'm not going to because I want to get on with it. That's it. Finish, and away we go. Playing this on my PC and my specs, uh, it's a pretty old PC. Because of the pandemic, I haven't had a chance to really get together a new PC. Parts are pretty scarce, chips are pretty scarce, so yeah. But I can meet the system requirements. Runs fairly good. The fallen leaves tell a story. Elden Ring was shattered. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome Dung Eater, and Sir Gideon Othmir, the all knowing. Okay. I think that's the first time I've seen that. I always skip the cutscenes. Like even the first time I play the game, I skip the cutscenes. And, and like the... one other, whom Grace would again bless, a tarnished of no renown. Cry. 
across the fog to the lands between. To stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. Wow, that's way cool. They actually show your character in the, the opening cutscene. Unless they always show the prisoner. Like I said, I always skip this, so uh, this is the first time I've watched it. I know. Really bad. I'm not into story. I'm into strategy. Combat strategy. Okay, here we go. This is uh, just like a gesture for multiplayer. Just ignore that. And like I said, I'm going to keep this on a need-to-know basis so we can keep this like a pretty fast-paced walkthrough. This is where we're going. It's going to say we need... A finger opens only to those carrying a finger. Where's the finger slack? It's over here. The tarnished wizened finger. This has to do with multiplayer. I'm playing solo offline. So I, I have nothing to do with multiplayer throughout this entire walkthrough. Okay, so anything that is uh, connected with multiplayer, I'm just going to pick up and ignore. Right? Okay, so now we got a finger. We can go out. I'll show you about the prisoner's weapons um, a little later. For now, the chapel of anticipation, there's nothing to pick up around here as far as I could tell. I looked all over, I couldn't find anything. So let's just continue down here. In here is the first boss fight. Already? Yeah, it's kind of a joke actually. I think it's a running joke with all the Souls game. The grafted scion, you're not expected to beat him, even though you can. And you get a weapon and a sword for doing it. I think you get 3,000 runes, but it's ridiculously tough. And you're grossly underpowered, so just run up and let yourself die. And then give it a shot here. Okay. And that's it. Thing about that is, you get no do overs. So it's really hard to practice for me. If we want to try again, you have to start a brand new game. Or wait until you face him later on. We will face him later on, but at that point we're going to be so buffed it's going to be a completely different fight, so... You know. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. even if it does violate the Golden Order. Come on, prisoner up and at him. Let's go. We got a golden order to violate. Lots to do. And... We're off. At this point, you're given the flask of crimson tears. This will refill your health. And the flask of cerulean tears. This will refill your focus points, which is basically your magic juice. All right? And... If you look in the bottom left corner of the screen, you have four containers. The bottom container is your item container. It currently has the lands between rune keepsake. If you press the use button, okay, henceforth, I'm going to just say 
the name of the action to make this cross-platform compatible. So regardless of whether you're playing on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, um, I'm just going to say the name of the action, okay? So familiarize yourself with attack, strong attack, guard, skill, use item, or use, and event action, which I'm just going to call action, okay? Use and action, all right? Okay, so now I'm pressing the use button that will use the keepsake lance between the room. Look at the bottom right corner of the screen and we just got cha-ching 3,000 runes. Runes are the game's currency. You can use that to level up and you can use that to buy stuff. And something else, you can use it in smithing too. And that's it. So now the item container has an empty item in it so we don't want that. Go to your equipment, push like the main menu, go to equipment and down here. That's the one we just used up. Press whatever button that is for you. Remove. Remove it. And just remove them all. And we're going to reset them. So I'm going to put the Flask of Crimson Tears there. Back. And put the Flask of Cerulean Tears there. Okay. This will make it so that you can swap back and forth between these two. Without having an empty space. Because you don't want that. That will just slow you down in combat. Alright. And what I'm pressing is the use or the switch item button. Whatever this is for you, switch item, that's what I'm pressing. The switch back and forth between the Flask of Cerulean Tears and the Flask of Crimson Tears. Done? Next. That is the way to continue up there, but you should go down here into the Cave of Knowledge. This is entirely optional. Um, if you go through here and you have Basically, if you have tutorials on, I have tutorials turned off because it's just going to create all these pop-ups of stuff that I already know, and I can tell you a lot faster, and it's going to be a lot less annoying having all these pop than having all these pop-ups come up. But if you turn tutorials on, um, going through the cave of knowledge will give you a lot of tips about combat. But I'm going to tell you everything you need to know, so I'm going to turn tutorials off. All right, and you're not missing anything because if you go to your inventory and go to info all the tutorials that you would normally I lost it info all the tutorials that you would normally encounter throughout the game even if you have tutorials turned off will accumulate here so that you can view review them anytime you like so it's not like you won't have any tutorials at all all right next Read this message, and it tells you the cave of knowledge lies below. And you can talk to this guy, and he'll tell you. Well, he'll text you. <laughs> Brave Tarnus, take the plunge of learning and remembrance. Recall the arts of war and your warrior's blood. <laughs> All right, so. You do take fall damage in this game. If you jump all the way down to the bottom, you're going to lose about half your health. Don't do that. Go off to the right here and jump down to this ledge. And then from this point, you can jump safely down without taking any damage. It's It seems like you would take damage, but you can actually jump pretty far down without taking damage. All right? And up ahead is our first site of grace. These are kind of like fast travel points slash do stuff points. Okay? You find them. You touch them, you activate them, and that'll make them a fast travel point. And then you act, interact with them again, and you can do stuff. Right? So touch it. Lost Grace discovered this is now a fast travel point. If you go to your map, and you see we now have the Cave of Knowledge fast travel point here. And interact with it, and you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, much of which is irrelevant right now, because it's not applicable. We only have one spell, so that's not applicable. Um, we don't have anything overflowing from our inventory, so it doesn't matter if we use the chest. I'll show you about that later. Um, you can pass the time. This is important because sometimes you don't want to be fighting at night. Other times you want to be at night. So this is how you pass the time to any time of day. Uh, the most important thing right now, which is relevant, is flasks. Click on flasks. Um, this we can't do yet. This we can't do yet. This we can do. Basically, I have two flasks. This one holds the refill health stuff and this one holds the refill focus points stuff um focus points did i say this focus points are like the game's mana 
or Magicka, Magicka in Skyrim, Mana in Diablo. This game, the magic juice that your spells and your weapon skills use is focus points, and that's this. And you can out, you have four flask uses to start off with. You can increase that later by getting uh, golden seeds, or you may have five now if you chose the golden seed as your starting keepsake. Um, but we went with money. Don't worry about it. We're gonna get a lot more. Don't worry about it. Um, basically, if you're going as a melee character, you want it just like this. You want like to be able to refill your health a lot. If you're going with a mage character, you want to be able to refill your magic juice a lot, so you can switch it over and have three refills for your magic and one refill for your health. This is all you have until you come up to another site of grace. All right, so you need to go back to a site of grace to refill both these back up to like however you um, allocated it. And every time you go back and rest at a site of grace, all the enemies respawn. So basically this is what you have to work with as you encounter each enemy camp or you go through each dungeon. Because if you go back to the site of grace and refill, all the enemies respawn, you have to do the whole thing over again. So this is part of your strategy, how you're gonna allocate this. Um, the way I'm going to play, the way this walkthrough is going to go, I typically go heavy on the Magicka and at least one later on I'm going to go with two, but for now just one in the flask of... I keep forgetting the names of these. The, the health flask, let's just call it a health flask, okay? So one and three, alright, confirm, done and done. Alright, so now that we have some good light here, take a look, good look at our bad boy here. He starts off like this, with the sword in his right hand and the magic staff in his left. And you don't want that. There's a glitch where um, when you use your weapon skill and you have the glint stone staff in your left hand, often um, the prisoner will... First of all, the sword is basically a sword. You can do all, all kinds of things with it. I'll show you about that later. And the staff casts this magic blade, see that? It's a bit of a, a delay and then it shoots out and it's pretty powerful. What happens though is if you use your weapon skill, sometimes with the staff in your left hand, this guy will automatically shoot one of these out. And this is using up your FP. And this is annoying to no end. So um, I found the best thing to do right away is go to equipment. This is what's in your right hand. This is what is in your left hand. Immediately remove whatever the button is here. Remove the staff and click on here and put the staff in your right hand. Okay, so now you have two weapons in your right hand. You can switch back and forth between them. You can have up to three weapons in each hand and just switch back and forth between them. All right, you just go to system, whatever that is for you. Go down here and press this button here, switch right hand armament to switch back and forth between the staff and the sword. All right. For now, we're just going to have the sword and nothing in the left hand. You could have the shield, but we're not going to do that. We're going to leave the shield off. Why those meters slack? Those meters are a special kind of buff that this particular shield gives you, giving you protection against focus and sleep not applicable right now so need to know basically you don't need to know it forget about it for now just keep the shield off done and done the sword you can attack you can strong attack if you hold down the strong attack button you get a charge attack or you can jump up and press the strong attack button and you get a jump attack all right attack strong attack charge attack that's hold down the strong attack button and jump attack jump up in the air and press the strong attack button and finally every weapon strike that most weapons have a skill you can see the skill on the left side of the screen just above the the item containers like in the you see where it says impaling thrust that's this weapon's skill all right you press the skill button and you get this it's really powerful and this uses up your FP. And you can see how much FP it uses up by going to equipment, hover over to 
the S doc. I'm just going to call this the sword henceforth instead of the S doc. This is the sword. This is the staff. Okay, hover over the sword, and you can see impaling thrust FP cost cost you nine FP. And down here, here's your FP. You start out with a total of 74 FP. We've used up a lot of FP so far just demonstrating. So now we only have 32 left. Look up in the top left corner of the screen. You see a red bar, a blue bar, and a green bar. The red bar is your L. The blue bar is your FP. The green bar is your stamina. As you can see, we've used up a lot of FP just through this little demonstration here. You can refill your FP by pressing the use button when the flask of cerulean tears is equipped down in the bottom left corner of the screen. We're not going to do that now because we still have some FP left. All right. And uh, when your health is low, you can press the use button. Switch over to the flask of crimson tears and press the use button and that will refill your health. For now, just keep it on the flask of cerulean tears. Next, we're going to start taking down some enemies. There's an enemy right there. Lock on. This is incredibly important. Wrong one, Slack. Uh, the AI on the PC version is incredibly clunky. I see that From Software still hasn't mastered um, the art of making a good PC port, but they're getting better. They're getting, it's way better than the other uh, Souls games. Uh, but it's still really clunky. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, what was I going to do? A oh, lock on. Up here, this button here, whatever button that is for you, this is a very, very important. Lock on, remove target. As soon as you get into any enemies in the area, you want to lock on. See that little white dot on the enemy? Press the same button to remove lock on. When you're locked on, you stay locked on. You kind of like circle around the enemy. Um, Sometimes you don't want that though. You want to be able to run away. So remove lock on so that you can run away. But for now, lock on and press the skill button and you get this. The impaling thrust. Sometimes when another enemy is nearby, you automatically lock on to him. Not always though. Press the skill button and you get this. Pretty deadly. Let's repeat. And this guy here. Lock on. Skill. And down he goes. Bob's your uncle. Next. Look up there. We see an enemy up there. Obviously, we can't do the impaling thrust on him, so we're going to have to use our staff. And switch over to the staff, and you look at the bottom left corner of the screen. You see magic blade, but it's got a cross through it, meaning that we don't have enough magicka to cast the... I keep forgetting this, the name of it. Um... This we here, the magic glint blade. As you can see, it costs 12 FP. So, press the use button with the flask with spilling tears to refill your magic bar. Okay, so the blue bar is all filled up again, and we're just going to target him and cast out a couple of glint blades. And make sure you dodge. I took a little damage because I took a hit. Two, two of those blink glint blades will do him in. And normally he falls down. It's my favorite part. <laughs> it ripped me off, game. That's the first time I see him stay up there. All right, well. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have any loot. Um, there's lots of ingredients that you can pick up throughout the game. The first time you pick up a certain type of ingredient, you get a little pop-up. That's the last time that happens for Roa Fruit. Okay, pick that up. Pick this up. And onward. Let's switch back to the sword. Um, one thing you could do um, is guard counter. Let's just use our shield for now. Put up the shield, lock onto this guy, and hold up, hold guard. All right. Whatever button that is for you, this one right here. By the way, there's no pause in this game, eh? There's no pause. When you're in a menu screen, the game still goes on. All menu screens. There is no pause. Okay, here he comes. When he attacks, press the strong attack button and you'll get a guard counter. And as soon as um, you do that, he kind of attacks him and he leaves himself open. This rarely happens. Let's just provoke him. There, that's a guard counter. 
and that's a critical hit. That's exactly where he goes down. So you hold up guard. As soon as he attacks, you have a pretty large window of opportunity right after he attacks. As soon as he attacks, press the strong attack button. It won't do that. What will happen is he'll kind of automatically parry the attack and then he'll leave himself open for a critical hit. And all you have to do is just press the attack button and you'll get that mega stabbing motion and do him right in. Normally, when you get to stronger enemies, um, sometimes they don't die, but you do a lot of damage. All right, so that's guard counter. And let's take off the shield for now. I'll explain why later. Lock on. Impaling thrust. There he is. He didn't fall down. What's up with you? Okay, whatever. Lock on. Skill. Impaling threats. That's the skill button I'm pressing, by the way, once again. Press the skill button. Here, the game wants to teach you about how to do a stealth attack. This guy is kind of... It's pretty hard to do a stealth attack on him. Usually, I just do a jump attack. So, jump up and press the strong attack button. Lock on. Jump up. Down you go. This guy up ahead, we can do a stealth attack on. Go down here, get in the grass, sneak up on him, lock on, get right up his ass. Like, right, like, you know, you can sniff his butt. That's how close you have to get. And then hold down the attack button once you're in position. Right up his butt. And that's a critical hit. Really awesome. All right. This guy is just going to lock on and do our impaling thrust. Press the skill button. And he's usually pretty tough, so you can't do him in. So after you press the impaling thrust, a couple more attacks, and he goes down. And that's it. Now this is a t this is kind of like a practice dungeon. All right, at, this is a statue of America. This is a place where you can fast travel to. If you die, you're gonna have a choice of going to a statue of America. Usually they place statues of America near the end of a dungeon, so that if you die, once you could. Once you face the boss, you don't have to go back to the beginning of the dungeon uh, where there is typically a site of grace. You have the choice of coming to here, a statue of America. All right, uh, I'll show you about that later. Now, this is a typical dungeon. Um, you come to the end and there's this mist you have to go through and you get locked into this big arena and you have to kill the boss. This boss, compared to all the other bosses in the game, is fairly light, although he's a force to be reckoned with. The thing you want to do right now is make sure your um, focus points are completely refilled and then switch over to your staff. Okay, we got our magic staff. We're going to go in, lock on, and just simply spam the staff. Going to maybe four or five times. Do it five times just to make sure. Don't, don't really go very far in. Why am I not? Here we go. Okay. Go in. Lock on. Spam. And that should do it. That's all it takes. And you go bye-bye. And you earn 400 runes for that. So we earn 200 runes for killing all the enemies in the dungeon. And we got 400 runes for him. We got 3,000 runes from the lands between rune keepsakes. And now we should have 3,600 runes. We're a rich bitch. And switch over to your sword. And we're at the end. This is where we started. There's the guy we talked to. And that's the Cave of Knowledge. This has to do with gestures. Um, that's entirely to do with multiplayer, so I'm just going to ignore that. Alright, so that's where we came in. We jumped down Cave of Knowledge, and this is where we go out to continue. This is pretty much the only line linear part of the game. All the rest is like wide open world. Here is another Site of Grace. Interact with this to activate it. Now we have the Cave of Knowledge on the map. If you press this button here, Sites of Grace. That's where we are now. And this is the very beginning of the Stranded Graveyard. Alright, and our flasks, if you use your 
switch item button, switch back and forth, see the bottom left corner of the screen. Um, we can have two more shots in our flask of cerulean tears to fill it up again, just simply rest at the side of grace. And that's it. And now our flask of cerulean tears is filled up. And it also recharges your health bar and your everything gets recharged. Okay, but once again, all the enemies respawn. So use that carefully. If you have a site of grace near an enemy camp and you're trying to clear an enemy camp or a dungeon, don't say to yourself, oh, I'm running low on health and whatnot. I'm just going to go back to the site of grace and recharge everything. Don't, because all the enemies will respawn. All right, so that's the whole game. You have to figure out how to use the resources you have on hand to get the job done. All right, and don't worry, the slack has got your back. Um, we have to interact with this. This also has to do with multiplayer, so just grab that and ignore it. And then we're going to take the elevator up. And you can do that by simply stepping on the center there, the little circle in the center. If you screw up and you find that the elevator is up, like let's say you ran across it and it went up, and you go, uh-oh, what do I do? I want to get up there. I'm stuck. No, you're not. Just go over to the lever here. There's a lever right there. Pull the lever. And the elevator will come back down again. Eventually. There we go. Yeah, I did a little roll there. That's dodge. I'll show you about dodge later. Once again, need to know. <laughs> Alright. Out we go. And we are in the game. <laughs> what do I do, Slack? <laughs> I know. It's nuts. I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Okay, we have another side of grace here. Interact with it. Yeah, the game doesn't tell you dick, eh? It doesn't tell you dick. It just gives you tiny little hints here and there. Um, what it's going to tell you now is that once we're out in the open, now, I think maybe it happens inside, but um, it's more relevant outside. Once you're out in the open and you activate a side of grace, see that little that glowy line there see it's pointing you in the direction that you're supposed to go generally so basically it's pointing right at that church so that's where we have to go next but you know there's so much stuff to explore you don't have to go there you can do whatever you want you can do whatever you know suits you whatever suits your fancy for now let's talk to this guy have a little chat oh yes tarnished are we Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Oh no. Is there anything we can do about that? Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. Okay. Me. Oh. Vare. How do you do? Take care to listen. Okay. Are you familiar with grace? Yeah, a little bit. The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times that is the guidance of grace a path that a tarnished must travel hmm indeed grace's guidance holds the answers it will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow even if it leads you to your grave <laughs> so that's what i just explained to you um 
Everybody knows me, I hate story and lore, so uh, when my first time playing this game, I completely ignored that. And then later on realized, oh, wait a minute, that's important. He's telling me something important. That's where to go. That's what I gotta do. Alright, and let's talk to him a third Grace's time. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric. Drafted. Yeah, that's considerably later. We're going to be leveling up before we take on that crap. Um, and you should always talk to every NPC until he repeats the last thing that he said. Once he re starts repeating the last thing that he said, you know you've completely exhausted his dialogue. So let's it's talk to him again. To set off, I should think, to Castle Stormvale on the cliff, where Grace would guide you. If you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are. Okay, let's talk it's to him again. You set off, and you he's think? repeating. So just to press the action button to cycle through the dialogue. And so now we know we've ex ex exhausted all his dialogue. All right? Now, this down here has to do with multiplayer. Let me just uh, get rid of that. Completely ignore that. And I told you that there is no pause. Whenever you go into a menu or the map, the game continues. So if there, if there were enemies around me right now, they would continue to attack me. There is no pause. Um, I also explained to you how if you go to a site of grace, it resets all the enemies. And finally, there is a death tax. If you die, all the runes that you have on you get dropped at the point where you die. All right, and I'm going to demonstrate that right now. That guy right there... That's like a, f a field boss, I believe he's called officially. This is the Tree Sentinel. And um, if we had a melee character like maybe a Vagabond, maybe we could take him down. But um, don't try now. He's way too tough. We're going to take him on as soon as we get the horse. Once we get the horse, it's going to be a lot easier to kill him. Just for demonstrational purposes, what happens when you die? Let's go whack this guy. Hi there. Lock on. Actually got a shot in. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. And we're dead. Yes. Way above our pay grade right now. Uh oh. Look at the bottom right corner of the screen. We have no money. Just last 3600 bucks slack. No, nope, it's right there. It's right there. You have one chance to get your money back. And we're not going to do it now because he's pretty close to it. But you can see it. See that glowy thing in there? And you can also see it. Whoop, what are you doing? What are you doing there, Slack? Um, I used to pressing the B button to, um, yeah, you can see it on the map too. There it is. That's your money. All right. And he's walking right by it. We're going to wait till he patrols back up there and then we're going to go grab it. Go grab it. Let's just get sneaky. You can hold down the button that you use to run to sneak quickly. Okay? Slow sneak, fast sneak. Okay, let's go up, grab it, and we got all our money back. Now, what happens is, if you don't manage to re reacquire your money before you die again, then you lose the money permanently. You don't get it back. There's no chance of getting it back. So you have like... It's kind of like a death tax with a do one do-over. So that's all those three things that I just described. That's what make, makes this game really difficult because you have to plan everything carefully. Otherwise, you're just going to get clobbered and you have to do everything over again. But don't worry, I got your back. Uh, for now, we're going to go hunting. Down here are some sheep. But that's not the most important thing, right? We're just going to hunt on the way to do something else. We're eventually working our way west, right? But just to quickly demonstrate, here's some sheep. Lock on. Use your staff. Cast out a glint blade. And it's typically an instant kill on sheep. And if you see a little glowy thing, that means that he gave up some thin beast bones. Do the same thing here. This is really important.
and sheep are really skitterish so basically you want to cast your glint blade and then go into crouch mode so that you don't like scare them off right and run up and grab thin beast bones these are really important so we're going to be farming some thin beast bones from all the sheep that we encounter that one didn't give it up and keep your distance from the tree sentinel because we don't want to deal with it this is a runes uh, a rune fragment Okay, so what we're doing is we're heading over to this building right here. Pick up anything you see on the way. And that's that's my muscle memory. I always have B, the B key, configured to map. But there is no way to configure the map in this game. So um, my I set the B key to my skill. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, so if you see me doing that every once in a while, that's why. Um, from this building here, see the two birds there? Go towards the two birds. You could kill them to get some feathers, but that's not applicable. And we're going to jump down here. All right, we can make this jump without hurting ourselves. Jump down here, turn to the left, you're going to find a mushroom. First time we picked up a mushroom, so it's going to show that. Go to your inventory, go here, and we now have one mushroom. There's another one just dead ahead. Now everything respawns every time you go back to a great site of grace. So let's go back to this site of grace here and get these mushrooms to respawn. Why slack? Because we're gonna make some fire bombs. And the recipe for fire bombs is mushrooms and smoldering butterflies and this is an easy way to get um, some mushrooms okay so from that side of grace point to the west find the building you could farm some more beast bones like thin beast bones from those sheep over there but I'm going to show you a much better spot better spot to farm beast bones and look for the two birds go over to the big rock beside the two birds jump off the left side of the big rock Turn to the left, get yourself another mushroom. Okay, so everybody should have... I guess it gives up... Uh, I'm going to have to watch the video back. I think it's like a random amount of mushrooms. Now we have six mushrooms. That's enough. Continue down here. And you see like this sloping building down here. You can make this jump. It's no problem. You won't injure yourself. No problem. Jump down here. And then run down this edge here, all the way down to the beach. Double back here. And you're going to go under here and find a merchant right here. And you can see some butterflies over him. Over every campfire, there's always some butterflies. Grab those. Okay, now we have one smoldering butterfly. So now we have everything we need except a cracked pot. To make a fire pot, basically a fire grenade, which requires one smoldering butterfly, one mushroom, and a cracked pot, which we're going to get shortly. All right. Now this merchant is very important. Switch over to your sword, and equip your shield by pressing the switch left armament. This one right here, switch left arm in a minute. I told you to put your shield in your left hand and keep an empty space. For now, we've had it just as a fist. Now we have the shield up. Um, did I explain those two meters? Yeah, that's about that's a little bonus that this particular shield gives. Don't worry about that. Um, what's important right now is if you look at the left side of the screen, you see parry. That is your shield skill, as I explained before. What happens is um, this shield skill is overriding your weapon skill. If you you can't use your weapon skill right now, if you press the skill button, what he's going to do is do do this. Did I explain this before? Sorry if I explained this before, but this is I had to trash my first recording because of the glitch, <laughs> so I'm kind of forgetting what I talked about, what I didn't talk about. Anyways, your your shield has a skill, and when you have your shield equipped it overrides your weapon skill and you don't want this because this the parry skill it's like 
you have to what you have to do to make this effective is you have to do the parry at the exact moment that an enemy hits you with his weapon if you do that you get a parry and then your next attack is going to be a critical hit just like the sneak attack he's going to stab him and it's going to be horribly horribly gory and he's going to go down on his knees and it, you know if you could pull that off but the window of parry is like and it depends on the shield um, some shields have a larger window but it's like three quarters three quarters of a second tops half a second tops it's really really tight and I never use it I never use parry what you really want is a shield with no skill that would be ideal you can get a shield with no skill uh, by getting two special items later on you need to get um, what's that thing called the whetstone knife and you need to get a special ash ash of war I'll explain all about that later but using those two items you can remove the skill from a shield that's much later on um, if you want a shield with no skill right now you can buy one off this merchant right here which is why we're here all right so let's just unequip the shield because we're going to sell it what do you need? and interact with this guy any trouble? purchase and he always has this iron round shield every time 900 bucks don't worry about spending money we're going to make lots of money we have lots of money now and as you can see it has no skill all right so we're going to buy that and we're going to sell our other skew other shield okay sell the rift shield okay so now we have a shield with no skill okay equip that And now we can do our impaling thrust while we have a shield, which is really useful because now we can do guard counters um, and we have the impaling thrust. And I'll show you about how that useful that is later on. All right, so everybody's done that. Next, I'm not going to go back up just yet. I'm going to continue on down this way. Watch out for some enemies up ahead. They're a little above our pay grade. And you're going to look off to the the right here for this opening right here watch out for those guys and you're gonna go into this dark cave later on we're gonna get a torch the coastal cave we are here because we could discover a site of grace here which will create a fast travel point interact with that when you're inside a cave you can't use fast travel points but we can use them outside a cave to get back here All right so once we've done that um, rest to recharge everything respawn everything and now we're simply going to go back to the merchant why slack because he has those smoldering butterflies by the campfire and this is an easy way to farm smoldering butterflies so you can make fire grenades anytime you need a smoldering butterfly just fast travel to the coastal cave okay come there go to the merchant go to his fire and get a smoldering butterfly Bob's your uncle I remember that uh, I go to inventory and it's right here. Okay, so now we have two. Let's do it two more times. Go to your map, coastal cave, and we're gonna run back and get a couple more smoldering butterflies. I see um, a number of videos coming out where people are using the horse to go all over the map to collect a whole bunch of key items like a whole bunch of smithing stones, a whole bunch of golden runes, uh, keys, weapons, all kinds of stuff to create a super powerful overpowered build right off the bat, um, often without having to go into any combat at all. I've seen at least four videos like that. Um, I'm not going to do that in this walkthrough. Not that I have anything against that um, strategy. If you want to do that, all the power to you. If you make videos that explain how to do that, all the power to you. But um, my uh, philosophy is um, you shouldn't have to do that. 
you shouldn't have to collect i mean like if you just started if you're just starting to play the game right you typically wouldn't know where all that stuff is so um and i don't believe that the game developers um expected everybody to know where all those items are all over the map like like the, the map is there i did it again i pressed the map but the map is huge it's absolutely humongous all right um i'm going to do a more take a much more local organic approach i'm just going to use the stuff that's in the immediate area to our advantage and proceed through the game like that because i'm convinced that it can be done and it can be made easy you'll see <laughs> all right so now everybody um should have four smoldering butterflies and at least four mushrooms that's it we're done bring up your map and go back to first step so let's take us back up top Once we're back up top, like I said, the magic light thing is pointing to the church, so that's where we're going next. And here is some sheep. Let's hunt them on the way. Usually I like to cast the glint blade and then go into sneak mode to not alarm them. Sorry if I said that before. Because if you alarm them, they go into like roly-poly mode. This is one the tree blocked him. This one has a thin beast blade. See, he went to roly poly mode. See, I alarmed him. That's what you don't want to do. That's why I go into sneak mode. This one only gave up a beast liver. Let's do this one. There we go, thin beast bones. Why are we collecting thin beast bones, Slack? To make bone darts. Where is this guy? Okay, it doesn't matter. Bone darts are incredibly useful. It's completely random whether they give up uh, bone darts. See that glowing skull there? Every time you see a glowing skull, destroy it. Usually I like to jump up and do a jump attack. Or I just... It's kind of finicky. There you go. And it always gives up a golden rune, which is money. Okay, so every time you see a glowing skull, whack it and grab it. Alright, you can go into your inventory. There's a golden rune. Use it. And you get money. Watch the bottom right corner of the screen. 200 bucks. Cha ching. No, no, not the. <laughs> the sheep came right up to me because he knows that the, the tree sentinel's there. Aha, uh -huh, you can't touch me. Anyways, that's not the best place to farm sheep, so just ignore that for now. This field here is the best place to farm sheep or farm thin beast bones. Make sure you grab this right here. This will give you two golden runes. That gives you a lot of money. Go into your inventory. Use that. Watch the bottom right corner of your screen. Cha-ching. And we're at the church. And here is a site of grace. Interact with that. Activates it. Puts it on the map. So now we have the Church of Ella site of grace. And we have a merchant. First thing you want to do is grab the smithing stone. And we can't use it right away because we need at least another one. And we don't have another one. So, um, like I said, need to know. You don't need to know that right now. From the merchant. You're a we have lots of money. I can see it. But I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Carly, purveyor of fine goods. All right, from this purveyor of fine goods, you're going to purchase the crafting kit, the telescope, and a torch. And let's buy a cracked pot. 
even though we're gonna find one for free, just buy one for now. We're gonna find one for we're gonna find bots for free. Um, but let's buy one now, just for demonstration purposes. Goodbye. All right, so buy those four things. Now, with the crafting kit, we can craft stuff. Open up your menu, menu and you now see that the item crafting um, option is available. Click on that, and we can now make fire pots, bone darts. We can make all these things as long as you have the ingredients. So here you see the ingredients for a fire pot are a mushroom and a smoldering butterfly. And you also need a cracked pot, but the cracked pot is reusable. Okay, basically what this means is you can have one fire pot in your possession at a time because we only have one cracked pot. When you're in combat, you can't craft. So that's why it's valuable to have multiple cracked pots so that you can throw multiple firebombs while you're in combat, right? So we're going to get more cracked pots later. Let's make one right now, make a, a firebomb. And let's make some bone darts. Use two thin beast bones to make five bone darts. Done and done. All right. Telescope. Um, go to your equipment. Look on the right side of the screen here. Here's your pouch. You can hotkey up to four items in your pouch. This here, the memory of graces, gives you the option to spend all your money um, currently on hand to fast travel back to the last side of grace. Why anyone would want to do that is beyond me. Um, I've read online some people describing certain situations where you'd want to do that. I'm never going to do it. Never. So I'm just going to take that off right now. And you can see at the bottom left right corner of the screen, remove, press that button to remove that. And I'm going to put, if you press switch, I'm going to put the telescope there. All right? And I forget how to do this on the PC version, but right now I'm pressing the action button and I'm pressing, I think it like it outlines it for you. Oh, you can actually do it like that. I didn't know that. Okay. I always use the hotkeys. Anyways, I'll hunt that up for you. Um, how to get the exact controls to bring up your telescope, but it's in the pouch. Oh, I know. Let's go to inventory and go to info. There we go. Should be in here somewhere. See, these are all the tutorials that... Um, would have popped up had we left tutorials on and as you can see you can peruse them now at your leisure so you didn't miss anything by keeping tutorials off and i don't have the pouch tutorial yet tutorial yet so when that appears i'll show you how um you can see which keys you need to press or which buttons you need to press to use the telescope. But I find this extremely useful. Press the forward button to zoom and you can see what enemies are all about. This is really useful and I'll show you why later. All right. For now, we're going farming. We want 40 bone darts, so we need to collect 16 thin beast bones or rather however many you need to do that. And this is a great place to go farming. Just ignore that guy for now. We're just going to kill all these sheep here. And I'm out of magic juice. Going to sneak mode. Back off a little bit so he doesn't get excited. And he gave up. Here we go, getting lots of beast bones. That's it. Okay, so once you've been farmed out, you can simply go back 
either fast travel, mm -hmm. just walk back, rest at the site of grace, and it respawn all those sheep. Rinse and repeat until you have enough to make 40 bone darts. Alright, so let's go to item crafting. Bone darts. And I have 25. Alright, so I'm going to do that off camera. This is your homework. Farm up enough beast bones from those sheep to make 40 bone darts. I have 25. Don't have to make too many more. And bone darts, uh, we can also put in our one of the hotkeys for the pouch. And I'm going to put those right here. So just press the switch button and put the bone darts there. And Bob's your uncle. All right, so that's your homework. Get some thin beast bones from farming all those sheep. And I'll meet you back here at the church for part two of Elden Ring. Now, was that worth the price of admission or what? Special hour-long video. Post a comment. Uh, thumbs up. Subscribe for more. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.